Hello, I'm Professor Lu. Welcome to our live stream. Today, we are going to be doing part two of a draw along of this torso drawing I did in color pencil a ways back. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. I encourage all of you guys to draw along with me. You can draw in any media you want. You don't have to use colored pencil. And you guys can decide. You can start a new drawing today. I am going to be doing part two of this drawing that I started in a previous stream. But it's up to you guys, however you want to do it. I would challenge you guys to stick with your drawing, though, because what we're going to be talking about today is the challenges that occur when you start to work on a drawing on a longer term basis. If you guys would like to download a high res version of the reference photo, that link is in the video description below. It's also in the news channel in the Art Prof Discord. Okay, quick shout out, first of all, to Faber Castell, who provided the watercolor pencils that I'm going to be using today. So thank you so much, Faber Castell. And another thing that I like to do, especially when you have a box of colored pencils that's really huge, like I have 60 of them, which honestly is over the top, but fun if you can have it, is I like to organize the colors. So what I have put together here, these are all colors that are very dark. I also have these colors here, which are neutral colors, earthy tones, there's a green in here, but you can see it's an olivey green. And then I also separate the really bright saturated colors. These colors I'm probably not gonna use as much, but I find when you have so many colored pencils, it's really nice to group them in advance. Other materials that I have today, I have a utility knife if you wanna sharpen your pencil. I also like to use sandpaper. This is really good if you want to get a very sharp tip. You just roll the colored pencil across like this, and that enables you to get a much sharper tip. And this is very handy. I thought for the longest time that you could not erase colored pencils, but this is a sand eraser that's from Tombow, and it works pretty well. It's not going to get rid of everything, but it's quite effective for some of the lighter lines. So I will demonstrate to you guys how to use this eraser because I was very pleasantly surprised when I first got to see this eraser. Okay, now what I'm going to do first, which I really encourage you guys to do if you're still working on the same drawing, one of the compelling reasons to work on a drawing in more than one sitting is so you can really step back get some distance from the drawing and start to look at it with a pair of fresh eyes. So what I'm gonna do right now, everybody do this. If you have the same drawing, do this. Get back and stand far away and evaluate your drawing from a distance. This is very important because today, we're gonna to spend a lot of time very up close to this piece. We're gonna add in a lot of details. And so this moving back and forth back here to up here is pretty important. You guys are gonna have to do that every 10 minutes or so. So that way you keep track of the cohesion of the entire composition. Okay, what I'm going to do now actually, I wanna do some redrawing because you know what really bothers me about my drawing? It's not the lack of accuracy because yes, <laughs> there's definitely that, but I don't care about accuracy. What I do care about though is gesture. Now, if you guys look at the reference and you look at my drawing, oh my God, you guys, I did not do a good job on this. Do you see how straight my torso is? And if you look at the reference, there's a very dramatic tilt and I did not nail that at all. And that bums me out because I'm like, oh, if there's anything that matters about a torso, it's the gesture of it. And so I'm just very annoyed at myself right now that I failed to capture that. I got into some of the detail work a little bit too soon. So I'm gonna do the best I can to fix that gesture. Cause I think a lot of people would look at this 
and say, oh, well, you didn't get it, so can't do anything about it. You can't. There's some things cosmetically you can do to shift that a little bit more. We have a question from Soy Tainley who says, does the sand eraser, which is this right here, destroy the tooth of the paper? It doesn't destroy it, but it will make that area of the paper a little bit coarser. And so that's a compelling reason for you guys to use good quality paper. Because if you use paper that's like copy paper, it's going to totally fall apart. This paper that I'm using today, this is Stonehenge, and it's pretty sturdy. So I really like this paper a lot, but it's up to you. I mean, however you guys want to go about doing that. And great comment from Rachel who says, everything looks good when you've been with it too long. It's like Stockholm Syndrome with art. Even with a long book, it's good because you put so much time into it. That's great. You know something? I actually had a student tell me, actually it was Alex Kiesling who was in the freelance illustration stream. He told me that being in my class was like having Stockholm Syndrome. I'm like, thanks, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna to try to make some adjustments down here. I'm gonna get this tilt. And I'll tell you guys, if you're looking for drama today and fun expressive stuff, you're not gonna get it because I have to draw much slower than I normally draw in order to get some of these changes in a more dramatic way. Actually, this color's a little bit too dark. I'm gonna to switch to something a little bit more mild. So what I'm doing here, I'm just pulling out the left side of the torso so I can get that tilt a little bit better. And really what I'm doing here, I'm not really working on the drawing in terms of details as much as I am fixing, I'm adjusting. And I think sometimes when people are working on a drawing, they've been working on it for a while, you end up saying, oh, well, it's fine. I know it's not working so well, but it's okay. It's not okay. Don't settle for less, okay? Don't tell yourself, oh, I missed the boat. There's nothing I can do now. I'm just gonna let it be. I mean, there's a limit to what I can do to fix this. I will definitely acknowledge that. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna just settle for less. I'm totally gonna try my best to fix this. So what I'm really doing right now is I'm more fixing the contour. So you can see I'm trying to fill in and pull out this hip towards the bottom. So actually what I'm gonna to try to do today, I'm gonna to try to exaggerate the form more because another thing I don't like about my drawing, I don't know, I just feel like it's very even and generic and smooth. I don't like that. I mean, to a certain degree, you have to start that way because if you don't start that way, it can become a hot mess really, really fast, but don't settle for less. Try to fix it. You know, if you guys don't fix it, it's fine. It really is. But try. That's the most important thing. I think what bums me out is when people don't even try. And then it's like, then they whine about it later. It's like, well, yeah, but you didn't try. So you just got to make the effort. And to me, you will learn from that effort. Even if it does not come out the way you want it to, you will still get something out of that experience. Okay. I still want to do a little bit more, but... Here's where I'm going to use the sand eraser because, oh man, you guys, I blew it on this gesture here. So you can see it doesn't get rid of the contour altogether, but it does pretty well. I mean, considering that other erasers sort of have no shot at all, I'm sort of really surprised by this eraser. So it's pretty cool. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to go back in with maybe a lighter color and let's just totally redraw the contour. I know it's hard for you guys to see, I'm sorry. Can't use a DSLR camera and all my fancy sound equipment when we're streaming live, unfortunately. Maybe some, I'm sure someday they're gonna figure out a way to make the quality as good as it is in our studio tutorials, but at least for now, that's not really an option. All right. So you see, just by making these minor, minor adjustments, I'm gonna pull out the stomach, maybe pull it back here, which actually that messes up my belly button, great. <laughs> That's gonna happen, you guys. You fix one thing, something else goes off. That's okay. That's totally fine. That's to be expected. 
but you guys have to be willing to rock that boat a little. I mean, don't, that's the temptation. Once you've worked on a drawing for a while, you say, oh, well, but I spent all this time working on that and I don't want to have to fix something that I spent so much time on. Don't have that mindset because you're going to close off a lot of options that maybe you should have explored in greater depth. So don't just say, oh, well, I worked on it. That justifies me not fixing it, but that does not, <laughs> not at all. So even now what I'm doing is I'm shifting the direction of the belly button so you can see it better. And also I'm gonna take away, like there's way too much shading here. So let's just get rid of some of this. So these fixes, this is the thing that a lot of people just skip. They just say, oh, well, I work so hard on this. It must be fine. I can just move on. I'm telling you guys, you can't move on. Make those changes. Don't be afraid to do that. That's the difference between a drawing that I think is very aware and a drawing where you're just on automatic pilot, which I don't think is such a great thing to do. So what I will be doing is looking at the chat now and then. I'll take a break, see what you guys are talking about. And then I'll take some time and draw. But when I'm drawing, I'm not going to be answering comments or looking at the chat because I just can't do those things <laughs> at the same time. It's just a little bit too difficult. All right, let's take a look. Again, even a slight tilt back like this, it gives me distance on the drawing. You're going to see me do this like all day. In fact, you might notice that I'm going to be doing more looking than I actually am drawing. That's very common for drawing. Okay, I also wanna fix this arm because this arm also, like the other areas, I I, totally, I blew it. I blew it so bad with that gesture. <laughs> Guys, I did not do a good job. I know I'm supposed to be demoing what you should do, but sorry, <laughs> oftentimes I'm doing what I tell myself not to do. So tell me in the chat, how many of you guys are starting a new drawing and how many of you guys are continuing the drawing from the previous stream? Doesn't matter, whichever one you guys wanna do. I'm just curious to know what you guys are up to. Okay, and again, right now, I'm not thinking very hard about color because you know when you're going in and you're making changes, you can't really think about that. It's a little bit too much. So I find it more helpful just to think about what I'm trying to fix in the drawing and I'll work on the color later. Like sometimes it's just too much to try to do everything all at once. It's a little bit overwhelming for a lot of people. Well, it is for me, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe some of you guys are miracle workers and you can do all those things all at once, but it's not very common is what I'm trying to say. Okay, and I am gonna try to beef up some of the musculature. And I know it looks like I've done nothing. Yes, I, I have done nothing. But these changes, while they seem small, they are important, okay? So th this is not a very glamorous part of the drawing process. So if you guys wanna see something magical, today's not the day. <laughs> today's the day to see all the really unsexy like, areas that are important, but that a lot of people honestly don't appreciate very much. Isn't that so annoying? It's like, but I work so hard and people are like, man, it's so boring. And I'm like, sorry, a lot of the drawing process is boring. Sorry to tell you that it can't always be so incredible and inspiring all the time. I mean, I wish it was. I feel like it's inspiring like 1% of the time. A lot of the time I'm just fighting my own like demons. Sorry, I didn't mean to get so deep. I know it's a little early <laughs> for that, but I don't do small talk in case you guys have not noticed. That's not my, that's not my thing. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to fix the shift of the shoulders because I made them too level. So what I'm trying to do, you saw me push down this shoulder and now this shoulder, I'm going to pull it all the way up here which might feel again, like, oh, too much, but it's going to give me that lack of evenness, which I think is very necessary for what I'm trying to do. So again, it's like, I'm fixing the contour. I'm making changes to the silhouette of the figure. I'm not trying to do any modeling. We will do that for sure. We will get to that. 
But right now we got to make these fixes because, oh dear, this is a mess, you guys. Do you ever, like, I'm sorry to say, but after I did this drawing last time, I was like, oh, why didn't I, oh, this, like, that's the only thing that goes through my head. And it's like a lot of people would just say, oh, you're fine. It looks fine. I'm like, no, it doesn't feel good. But I mean, that's usually a signal that you're not done. You still have work to do. Okay. So you can see now that I've done that, that really shifts the dynamics of the piece. In fact, hmm, this is tricky because I, I got to make this. This is a muscle called the deltoid. I'm sorry. I know we haven't done a lot of the anatomy streams yet. It's just Oh man, <laughs> there's so much to cover. I know people are like, you have so many videos. You have 600 videos. I'm like, I know, but I feel like I've barely scratched the surface. Like there's so much I still want to cover you guys. Okay. So that might be a little bit severe, but I'll tell you guys, I would rather overdo it and let this drawing look distorted then not do enough and have the drawing be understated. To me, that is really boring. I'd so much rather go over the top and make that happen. We have a question from Blue Wolf who says, are you using light or heavy pressure? Fairly light because I'm trying to just make changes. Later on, when I start to really define the musculature, that's when I'm going to get hardcore with physical pressure. And I will definitely talk about that because with colored pencil, you guys, your physical pressure is so important. I don't think people realize that you should have a very broad range of physical pressure when you draw with colored pencil. You should have some moments where you're barely touching the paper. You should have areas where you are just crushing it. And so... Don't try to let that physical pressure be too similar. It's going to make your drawing really, really boring. Okay. Darian is saying, I do too. I was stressing like crazy. So now I thought drawing would relax me. Yeah, I was looking forward to it too, you guys. Really, this is just as good for me as well. All right. I want to go back in. This torso is still bugging me a little bit. So I want to make it maybe a little bit rounder. And... Hmm. I think the arm too has to come further out. So actually what you guys see me doing is I'm really just like pushing everything that way. <laughs> like I'm just slightly shifting the angles so that things are more having that slant. And actually in here, I try to move over this shadow because it, it looks a little funky. If I don't do that like this. Yeah, I would say Blue Wolf, what I said about pressure, I would say this is pretty light. It's not crazy light, but it's definitely on the lighter side than it is on the darker side. Okay, so you can see that just flipped that and actually this contour too. So yeah, I guess the way I describe this, I'm really just working on contours right now and I'm filling them in because if I don't do that, it looks a little strange, but that that is pretty much the focus right now. It's just, okay, let's fix the contours get the contours better, and then we can return to the other things. Okay, now this deltoid, this, this form right here, sort of like an upside down teardrop, I'm actually gonna move this over that way because I think this is a little too wide. So I feel that this part of the process, it's the fixing, it's the adjusting, it's making those changes, and it's not very expressive, <laughs> but it's necessary, you gotta do this stuff. And I want to make this deltoid more bulbous. Everybody see this? Making it rounder like that. So who here has seen the sand eraser? I'm just curious because it's such an obscure tool. Like I did not know about it until a year ago or something. So I'm, I'm just curious. And guys, you know what else? I totally I chickened out on the hair. That is so annoying because I'm always bothering you guys. Draw the hair, draw the mass. And here, look at this. I totally bailed on the hair. Okay, we gotta go and fix that because uh yeah, that was that was a bad move, guys. And I I totally chickened down on the ear too. See this? Totally flaked. See, it goes to show you, it's like you can give people advice all day, 
and then totally not do it yourself. And I don't think it's that I'm a hypocrite. I hope it's not that. I think it's just there's so much to think about when you draw. It's very easy to forget about these things. As much as you might feel that, oh, yes, I know I need to do this. I'm going to try to do that. It's very easy. You just forget about that stuff. So it's constant reminders, right? Okay, so now in here, oh man, that neck is bad too. Okay, we gotta take some out here in the sand eraser. So are you guys seeing in your drawings, those of you who are working on the same one, are you guys seeing stuff you wanna adjust? Or are you going gung-ho, full steam ahead? It doesn't matter, I mean, Whatever you guys do, I have no idea where people are in their drawings. It's hard to see. Although I can't wait to see what you guys do in the Discord later on. Oh, this ear stinks. I just want a little bit more. Um, you guys will notice, though, even though I am not doing a ton of detail, I am drawing pretty fast. Like, does everybody see the speed of that? I think a lot of that is so that the color will blend all the way, that's an important thing. Like if you're doing colored pencil, the blending is such a big part of the second half of the drawing. And so that's why I'm trying to keep up my pace in terms of the blending. Cause if you do it too slow, it's very hard. Okay, we're gonna pull out a little bit of this like that. Okay, so that gives me a crisper edge and then pull this up. See, this is the part that is not fun, but it's like, you know, it's good for you, right? It's kind of like exercising. I don't know. I sort of torture myself on the treadmill because I feel like if I'm not on the treadmill, I'm not getting a workout, but that's my hang up. <laughs> so it's like, it doesn't feel good to run sometimes. Sometimes it hurts, but it's like, you know, it's good for you. You know that ultimately you will reap the rewards. Okay, let's fix this clavicle because this clavicle should be more across. Yeah, oh man, you guys are so off, this is terrible. And then this, which helps you see the clavicle, I mean the deltoid more, try to get that more dramatic. And there's like a little bit of, there's like a little pinch here of the muscle where you can see that tension. Guys, who's watching X-Men last night? It was not my choice, it was my daughter's, I swear. <laughs> we were trying to find a movie to watch. We couldn't find anything. I was like, look, there's, she's like, yeah, we haven't watched X-Men for a while. I'm like, yes, we have not. I think we should watch it right now. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I was thinking about Wolverine Spectre Alice Major. <laughs> Cause he's, oh my God, he's so crazy ripped in those movies, it's insane. All right, I wanna come down here there's this little impression. And you know, we didn't finish the whole movie because it got late and she had to go to bed. It's like, oh, guess we better finish that movie today. <laughs> All right. This is related. We're, we're talking about Petros Major, I swear. It, it all, it's all related, you guys. <laughs> All right. All right, stepping back. Look at it from a distance. I'm trying to see the whole, trying to not let myself get sucked in by some of the detail work. And I'm doing a lot of squinting, mega squinting today, guys. Today's gonna be about, I mean, this is my drawing face. That's the joke at Art Prof, <laughs> that I have this drawing face where I just am like doing this the whole time. Like I look like a total weirdo. But that squinting is important. Like you have to resist the temptation when you're working on a long-term drawing to just look at one spot because you will have to do that at a certain point when you start adding those details. But the thing is, if you do that too much, the drawing is gonna start to fragment. So you always have to keep in mind the whole of the drawing, the big shapes, as much as you're gonna zero in on those smaller shapes, you guys have to keep that stuff in mind. Okay, now what I wanna do, Guys, this neck is bad. This is really bad. Sheesh. Ugh. I don't know. It's weird because it's like you can work on a drawing for a while and you can say to yourself, oh yeah, this is totally moving along. And then I work on it more and I'm like, it's not. 
It's not even close. That happens a lot. It's like you bring the drawing to a different standard and then it, it's like a total game changer. Like you just think about the drawing very differently. Okay, so what I'm trying to do now is to re-emphasize, like really get this clavicle a lot more secure. And I'm pressing down pretty hard here. Like this is where you start to layer up a certain degree of density in your drawing that I don't see very much in people's colored pencil drawings, or it's one of those like photorealistic colored pencil drawings, not really my cup of tea. I know some people like that, but that's okay. You know, however you guys, whatever floats your boat, it's up to you guys. So much of this is personal taste, you know? And you guys don't have to agree with me on everything. I just have opinions. <laughs> okay. Let's see what people are talking about in the chat. All right, so we have a lot of people who are starting from scratch, like Sharon says they are starting from scratch. And Scott is saying, I'm taking an analytic sketching course this term, really excited. This sort of thing, not constructing with primitive forms or a skeleton is a nice alternative and so dynamic. You know, it's really funny because somebody actually posted the other day in the Discord, they said, what do you hate drawing? And a lot of the answers were, architecture, things that require a little bit more structure. And you know what my answer was? I just said, you know what I hate drawing? I hate drawing those still lives of a white sphere, a white cone, and a white cube on a white background. <laughs> like I hate that, like that's gonna be so boring. Tell me in the chat, have you guys ever been in an art class where you had to draw that? I'm like, dude, if I'm bored, the students are bored. So yeah, that is not my cup of tea. <laughs> okay, wow, looks like a lot of you guys have heard about the Sand Eraser. Seven Angelic says, brought the Sand Eraser in stock in the store you work at. And Johnny says, I use it for pen and ink. Great on quality paper. Yeah, awesome. And Karen has, great analysis on her drawing. I was happy this afternoon, but looking at it from afar, I had to start shifting, but shift one thing, you have to shift the next bit. Yep, it's like a domino effect. <laughs> like you can't fix one thing. And sometimes by fixing something else, you fix another area, it can get very confusing after a while. Dylan says, do you ever look back at it and say, ew, or do you look at it and feel inspired? Nope, it's ew. Totally ew. <laughs> Darian is asking, have you ever erased a certain part of your drawing so hard that you accidentally ripped your paper in the process? Not really. I mean, this paper I'm using, the Stonehenge, this is pretty sturdy paper. I mean, it's not like watercolor paper, but I mean, you'd have to erase pretty hard for that to happen. And Dat Sketcher says, yep, we had to draw all white stuff before. It's boring, but real helpful to recognize the sort of sensitive tonal value. It is, but my problem is that most of the world is not like that. And so in some ways you're training yourself to do this one specific thing that for me is not as directly translatable to the real world. That's my take on it. I know some people really benefit from that, but it's just my issue is if I'm not excited, I can't do it. I have to be in a mindset where I'm thrilled to draw something. Vanessa saying, I hate to draw those forms too. It feels pointless. We know it's not, but we have more interesting ways to achieve those skills. Yep. Okay. Sharon is asking, how do you decide when to switch colors? Okay. For right now, because I'm fixing things, I'm just picking the color that's already here. So for example, up here, there was already purple. So I thought, okay, I'll just use the purple to re-emphasize the clavicle. So right now I'm just matching what's there. But later on when I start actually fixing the color, we'll get more into that. But right now I'm just matching what's happening. Okay. Leo Kratos says his right shoulder is some way higher than the left. Okay, now I get a lot of comments about this, especially when the stream is over, people will comment in the comments, they'll say, your eye is too far to the left and this arm is too, and yes, that is absolutely true. In so many circumstances, my drawings are not accurate to the reference photo. 
In fact, I can't remember the last time they were. And so my feeling is I, I want to capture the gesture. Okay. So the gesture is this tilt. Okay. If I capture that, the more cosmetic things like little higher here, a little higher there don't really matter that much. Okay. It's a fine line. I mean, I just want the tilt and however I get that tilt is fine because I think there is such a thing as just picking too much and then you lose the gesture. And if you lose the gesture for me, it gets really boring really fast. Esther is asking, how do you layer colored pencils without making it look blotchy and messy? Okay, great question. So a lot of it, Esther, is actually what I talked about earlier, which is the speed, like this. Okay, so if I go like this and I draw quickly, not actually, let me work on that one area here. If I draw quickly, there's a couple of things that are happening right now. Actually, this is kind of a gross color. Um, I think I need some red in here. Yeah, this should be more red. So if I draw quickly and I draw in different directions, like a lot of people, they just do this. This is what I call right hand stroking. If you're right handed, this is the natural way your hand just wants to move. But you can't draw that way. OK, so look at this. If I work on this area here and then I want to push this area down, notice how the direction of my hand, it changes. Sometimes I'm doing this, sometimes I'm doing that. So a lot of it is the quantity of strokes, like a lot of strokes. That's why I'm drawing so fast and then shifting it into different directions. OK, all right. I want to make a few more changes because I'm still not there yet. Um, <clears throat> up here, I want to tilt this arm up a little bit more and this shadow is more dramatic. So actually, let's get the sand eraser and push this up like that. Yeah, there we go. OK, so that is also going to help me with getting that tilt. So I'm just going to go back in here with this like red color. I mean, it's a pain because then I have to move this up. Now this has to be all the way up here. So yeah, this is not glamorous, but it's necessary. It really is. I mean, most of the art process is not glamorous. So much of what you see on Instagram is people making it look glamorous. And I'm like, I'm sorry, that's not the way it works. It's not like that at all. For most of us, it's not like that for me. I don't know. Maybe those people are more skilled. I have no idea. Or you know what it is? I, I think sometimes the teaching is not what they're after. They're, they're not after the educational part of it. It's more of a performance in a way. And so I guess, I don't know, I'm sort of different in that sense because uh, not a lot of classroom teachers do this. I mean, they are now, but oh man, you guys, the crap I got you would not believe from my colleagues in academia. People were just, oh my God. And now with all the remote learning, I'm like, oh, you guys are loving me now, huh? Wow, that's convenient. Sorry, I'm a little bitter about the whole thing. And I'm sorry, but I do like having the last laugh. And I do like revenge. Like my favorite book, I'm not kidding, Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, I love that book. It's so good, it's so sweet. Tell me in the chat, who here has read Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas? I, I would like to know, because if you haven't, you really should. It's such a good book. It's all about revenge. Because they say that whole, the best revenge is being happy. And I'm like, no, revenge is like awesome. Con Count of Monte Cristo style. Oh, I love that stuff. <laughs> it's so good. All right, let's work on the hair. I got totally distracted. So here I really have to draw because, oh man, you guys, I wimped out on this hair. I did such a bad job. Well, I mean, I didn't do any job. I did nothing. <laughs> That's what I did. That was not good. Okay, so here, oh shoot, I gotta, I gotta fix this part too. Oh man, who here is looking at their drawing and just left and right, all you see is problems. That's what I'm feeling right now. It's just, oh my God, this and this and that and that. And this sucks too. And what about that? <laughs> That's my inner monologue. It's not really that panicky. It's just like you look around and you're just like, oh my God, where I even begin? It's kind of like unpacking my house. I just moved into a new house. And so, oh my God, I'm like, it's going to be a year before we unpack all these freaking boxes. Like, why do I have so many books? 
Why? Why does anybody own all these books? And it's like, how often am I really actually reading them? <laughs> like somebody actually said to me, I don't know if I read this somewhere, but they said that oftentimes they, they think books are sort of like trophies that you display on your wall in your home. I'm like, yep, sort of feels like that right now. <laughs> at least with the number of books. I'm like, why? Why do we own this book about Proust? I have no idea. Nobody's reading about Proust right now, but you know, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of green. I feel like this gray that I have is not happening because, well, so here's where reference photos really get on my nerves is when, actually this is a little bit too dark. I'm gonna switch to this lighter gray. This is where reference photos, they really become problematic in terms of color because the color is just bad. It's bad. I don't care like how great a photographer it is. It just does not match real life. And, and it's so, it's such a pain. Like that's why, actually I had somebody ask me in the discord, they were like, oh, well, we really want to do some draw longs where we draw landscapes. And I was like, okay, that's really a great idea because we want to have more variety, right? In terms of our subject matter. But I will admit the part of me that is severely bummed about that idea is that, oh my God, you guys, it's so different to paint on site. There's nothing like it. And I just feel like it's like, I don't like drawing a figure from a photo. It bothers me too. Okay. I'm not saying it's just landscape. It's a whole bunch of things, but landscape for some reason, it's like even worse because it's it's the space around you you're trying to convey the atmosphere. And it's like, you can't do that from a photo. So I don't like working from photos because I'd rather work from life, but you know, obviously there are circumstances where you just can't and that's fine, but landscape just, it bothers me so much to draw from a photo. It, it's like painful for me in a way that drawing a figure from a photo is not. So that's quite a different, quite a different thing. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to give the hair a little bit more volume. It's tricky. There's not a lot of contrast in the hair, but I'm trying to at the very least, actually I should probably pop out some of this highlight because I definitely got too dark too fast in that area. And another thing that's gonna help me is when I start adding, like if I put a red, next to this hair, instantaneously that makes the hair look lighter. And so a lot of times the fixing that you're doing, you're fixing something else to get something else to look better. Sometimes people are like, oh, well, you must have to fix the hair if that's, and I'm like, no, sometimes what you do is you work around the hair to make the hair look better. Okay. So it's not there yet, but he's got hair. Yay. <laughs> that's so exciting. Yay. Okay. Let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. Darian says, I'm left-handed. I have trouble drawing in different directions so much that I have to turn my paper and the shadow of my hand gets in the way of my light. What should I do? Yeah, that's tricky because I'm not left-handed. And so I don't have direct information about that. I mean, you might try working on your paper a little tilted. Like I have mine very straight, but I'm trying to think if I'm left-handed, maybe if I tilt the drawing that way, maybe that would be more the angle. And then maybe you can switch up a little bit more. Sorry, I don't have a great answer because I'm not left-handed, but I would just play with different orientations. And it's okay if you want to do that. Like we did this tutorial on Scratchboard with Song Kang. And if you guys watch it, she spends more time rotating her paper than she does drawing. And so it's fine. If, if that works for you, that really is okay. Okay. Dat Sketcher says, I'm a righty, but I have the same issues thanks to mobility issues. So the best way to combat it is to either draw in sunlight or get an adjustable lamp. Or my setup, I have two lamps. I have one lamp on one side and one lamp on another side. And so one lamp will create a cast shadow and the other lamp will like cancel out that cast shadow. So sometimes that's a way if you have two different lights coming from opposite directions 
you can make that work a little bit better. Okay, let's make some more changes. I think I'm missing, oh man, you guys, I blew it on, I blew it so bad with this hair. Oh geez, I don't even know if I can get this back. It's so dark, but let's try. Let's try anyway. Because you know what, you guys, don't be precious with your work. If you're precious with your stuff, you're missing out on a lot of opportunities. I get it. I know why people are precious with their work, but you limit yourself when you decide that, oh, it has to come out good. I'm like, dude, I can't draw under that kind of stress. That's just too much. So try not to do that as tempting as it is. I mean, who doesn't want to make good work? Of course you want to make good work. That's totally natural, but you can't have that expectation every time. You're just going to be miserable. Well, I don't know. We sort of are miserable. I'm miserable a lot. Um, but I don't know. A lot of that is self-imposed. So, you know, I can't speak for everybody. Okay. Let's get a little more volume. Okay. That's not great. I mean, I don't think it's amazing, but it's better than it was before. Oh, and you know something else? Maybe this needs to come down. Yeah, I'm just, I'm sort of on a rampage to make all these fixes but that's a good thing you want to go in that way yeah the face is bothering me oh god you guys i hate the way i did the face it looks really bad so you know let me just take a minute i'm just going to do some redrawing and make some of the wrinkles more clear oh my god there's so much guys we might need to do another draw along <laughs> for this drawing i'm sorry I don't know. You guys can tell me at the end of the draw along, we can make a decision together whether you guys want me to like finish, finish, finish it. <laughs> I guess I'm just sometimes I'm self-conscious about doing that because I feel like it's not very fun to watch when you're doing that, like really nitpicky stuff. It, it doesn't look that it's not that fun from a watching point of view, but I don't know. You can tell me in the chat when we're done today if you want me to do another one, because, oh my God, you guys, there's so many problems. Like, I had no idea how bad this was until I came back and looked at it. Sheesh. Yeah, I got to really see that nose is just, Ugh! who else is feeling that way? We might have to just replace my, my crap that I say all the time. My favorite word is crap here. Because, you know, I, I have to get, keep it clean <laughs> for the younglings. <laughs> but also we get demonetized. I don't want to get demonetized. That's not so fun. But uh, I don't know. We might have to just replace that with grunts. <laughs> it's actually sort of similar to sports in that way. I was a hardcore volleyball player when I was in high school. And we had this awesome drill. This was like my favorite drill where we had to spike the ball. But... When we spiked the ball, we had to grunt. We had to go, Rah! we had to do that. Like that was part of the drill. It wasn't because we did it. It just, my coach was like, okay, everybody scream when you do your spike. And it, it like, honestly, it helped. Like going, when you are doing a spike, it was like very empowering. I don't know. Maybe we need to do that here <laughs> because, uh, I don't know. Although I, there was this one guy in my art school who used to get really worked up. He'd get so mad, not at other people, at himself. And he would just like stomp across the room and make grunting sounds. We're all like, oh my God, come on, like freak out. <laughs> I don't know. He's always throwing this like tantrum. I don't know. There's always somebody throwing a tantrum in art class. Do you guys think that's true? Or is it just my class? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I told you guys, I probably have said this story at another point, but there was this one time I was in this, I was in this sculpture class and we were making armatures using armature wire. And this guy starts going, where's my wire? Where's my armature wire? And he like walks around the room. He can't find it. He's like getting more agitated. He's like, where's my wire? <laughs> I don't know where your wire is. And then he gets really mad. He's like, guys, where's the effing wire? Where is it? <laughs> it's 
like so mad. And then he like goes back. Of course, it's like on his sculpture stand. He felt very silly after that. But yeah, I, I've seen some tantrums in the classroom before. That was when I was a student. I was not the teacher at the time. Okay, I'm trying to tilt this. And I'm just, oh, I want to exaggerate this. I want this to be good. <laughs> after telling you guys not to care about whether it's good. World's most hypocritical art teacher. <laughs> <laughs> now, I guess what I'm trying to tell you guys is that everything you're feeling is natural. This is the way it is. And, you know, if you're so satisfied with your work all the time, I don't believe you. I just don't. All right, a little bit of facial hair in here. I don't know if I'm really going to get this out, but it might work with the sand eraser. Well, that's not bad. It's not great. Mm -hmm. Crap. Okay. A little bit. I just oh see now I'm almost tearing the paper, but it's not quite there. It's it's really not as bad as I think some people imagine, like rips, and I'm like, no, it's not that bad. Not at all. Okay, so that sort of fixed that. And I feel bad for working on this area for so long, but it's really bugging me. Like I just really need to like like for my own ego. I need the space to not look so bad. Oh God, and I think the nose got too big now. Shoot, guys, help, help. And there's these beautiful wrinkles that I am not taking care of. Hopefully you guys, oh yeah, you can still see that, okay. Yeah, and then like up here, there's like this bag under the eye. Yeah, see like right now, I'm not even thinking about color. I'm just redrawing, I am not. And maybe that's a little lazy. But I, I just can't do it. I can't do all those things all at once. I'm just using <clears throat> the blue color pencil as like a value thing. Like I'm just trying to work on value. That's it. And later on, I'll go back in and make stuff look a little bit better. Oh, okay. I want to keep working on that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to resist that temptation because the other parts need way more work. Okay. What I want to do, let's just do a quick pass over the whole thing. I'm gonna grab my purple. We're gonna do more drawing. I start to add in some of the areas where you can see more of the skin folds. Like definitely this muscle here, this is the sternocleidomastoid and it's coming down like this. I just wanna give it, I guess a little bit more elasticity. Like I wanna show that the skin I need to make this a little bit bigger. This is why you guys should really try to download the reference photo because you can see way more when you zoom in. So I really recommend don't draw off the screen. Try to draw so that it's from the reference photo. You're going to have a much easier time. That's why I have them available because, oh, you don't want to draw off the screen. It's too much of a pain. Okay, so I, I am fixing, I am correcting things. And I'm gonna just layer the skin on top. So this is why you guys, that rug of tone that I talk about all the time, it's important because now I can put the wrinkles on top and it's not a big deal because I have that rug of tone that's underneath it and that helps so much. Yeah, like here, oh shoot, I need the stupid sand eraser again. I got way too dark last time. Uh, yeah, I just need to pull out a little bit of highlight. Oh, this is a pain. See, it's like the sand eraser, it works, but it, it doesn't really work. It, it works, but not as much as you want it to. That That's the issue. It's like a very flawed solution if that makes any sense. Like it's a solution, it's just not a great one. Like there isn't really one that exists. Really what you should do is not draw so dark <laughs> like I did. That, that would definitely fix things, but unless I build a time machine, it's probably not gonna happen. Okay, so what I'm doing now, again, I'm starting to articulate, shoot, I need this blue again. Oh, I'm starting to feel a little desperate. <laughs> this drawing's driving me a little crazy right now. Although today when I woke up, I'm like, Clara, you're going to redeem yourself. You're going to show people <laughs> you still know what you're up to. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I don't know about that goal now. I just want to do, oh shoot. 
Oh, this is becoming a hot mess, you guys. Who, who else feels that their drawing is a hot mess? Please tell me I'm not alone. <laughs> okay, and then here, there's quite a bit of that skin. Oh, the skin does not look good, guys. I don't like this. I really don't like this. Ugh, that looks terrible. Oh my God. Okay. You know what I have to do? I have to blend this in. I don't think I'm going to do it all right now, but that is going to help. Once I start like really blending, that will make a big difference, but too many other things to work on right now. So what I'm going to do is let me zoom out. Actually, this is a little bit. Okay. Let's get back in here because there's a very dramatic wrinkle that comes down here. So you can really see the skin. And now I'm pressing hard because this wrinkle is quite dramatic and I don't want it to get lost. Actually, I need to zoom in. I can't see that wrinkle very well. Okay, so actually I'm gonna switch, let's see. I don't think I want green, this is a pretty warm image. Maybe this like, this is sort of like Prussian blue, I suppose, okay. Lauren Welch. She got me into Prussian blue. And now I'm like such a fan. Because for the longest time, I was like, oh, ultramarine. That's the way. It still is. I still like you, ultramarine. It's just that <clears throat> Prussian blue is kind of awesome. Okay, so now I'm pressing hard. And I'm trying to show some of the direction of the skin. And right now, you, you got to look real hard, guys. You, you can't flake here. So again, pressing pretty hard so I can show that distinction and even here. And yes, I know this is a blue arm. I am gonna fix it. I will, I will get there. <laughs> I, <will. laughs> I promise it's not gonna look this bad the whole time. I hope, I promise. <laughs> that's, that's the funny thing is like, when I was teaching at RISD, I never really did demos like this, never. I always spent all my time trying to get the students to do their work and I would talk to them and walk around the classroom. But I, now I'm starting to think there is sort of a benefit to watching somebody really finish a drawing because you do get to witness a lot of things that in the classroom you would never get to see. At least the way that I ran it traditionally, that was always the way it was. Okay, let's bulk up some of this orange and maybe get in, guys, I'm not happy with this. Oh, shoot. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. All right. I just feel like the wrinkles I'm putting in, they're, they're not dramatic enough. I don't like that. Oh, I need a different color. Let's see if this helps. Maybe getting in. See, it's sort of like I'm getting to that point where I just want to do everything all at once. Fix it all. Do all the anatomy. Do all the blending. But you can't. It's a slow burn. Don't get impatient like I am. <laughs> I mean, I'm an impatient person. Like that's why I have trouble doing certain media that are very slow, but it's, you need to have some degree. <laughs> you can't be like totally impatient. Cause I do think you guys, oftentimes the issues that people have with their drawings, it's not that their drawings aren't good. It's that they haven't stuck with it long enough. Do you guys think that's true? Tell me if that's true. Do you guys think that sometimes when you're working on a drawing, it's not because you're not good at drawing, but because you haven't stuck around long enough because you didn't have faith that it would get better. And that's the thing, you gotta stick around guys. Don't don't leave the party because uh, there, there might be something right around that corner. And I've had drawings, maybe this is one of them, where I just, oh, hate them so much. And then half an hour later, you're like, whoa, that's not so bad. But you have to have faith. You have to have faith that that's going to come back together. And that can be very hard for a lot of people. It's a big leap of faith, I believe. Ooh, there's a vein here. Look at that. You know who has nice veins? Wolverine. <laughs> Hugh Jackman has nice veins. Although he does that disgusting thing. They said that he like dehydrates himself to make his muscles pop out more. I'm like, that's so gross. That's so frightening. Like, I, ugh. I don't know. I'm not good with all that. Like, like those people who work out, like I could not do that. I don't have the stamina for that at all. 
So what I'm trying to do is I'm putting in these lines, but I'm also trying to like blend them into the surface because if I don't do that, they're gonna stick out too much, which, which is not a bad thing, but it's not really where I wanna take the work. Okay, I want to get some green in here. So this is like a really nice olivey green. There's a lot of green in human skin, but it tends to be like an olivey color because skin is usually like earthy tones. Um, but so what's nice about this is the green can go on top. And so it's there, but it's not like too prominent. I'm trying to work that. Actually, this could be a little more prominent down here. Okay, so again, not happy about this, okay? But I have to move on. You guys can't stay in one area for too long because you're gonna lose your sense of cohesion. Okay, let's see what people are talking about in the chat. And W315 says Prussian blue is more modern than ultramarine. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. That is so cool. Seven Angelic says, we love arting with you, Prof. You make me realize what I'm doing is normal. Oh, good. Because, guys, life is messy. It is not curated <laughs> the way that a lot of people do on social media. Sonnet says, every time I watched my professors draw, it was like watching magic. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people just feel like a magic trick. It is like that. And I, I think I can see why it's mesmerizing. I mean, I guess for me... It doesn't feel like that because that's what I do. But I think for your average person who does not spend time drawing, that is quite true. So this is a good observation from Blue Will Spirit who says, I draw too hard, I have to practice and learn a lighter touch so I can layer more. That takes a long time to develop, you guys. People would think, oh, if you say draw lightly, oh, no problem, I can do that. It's hard, it's really hard to draw lightly. And it took me a really long time to get to that point. Because in the beginning, what I tell people is when I draw light, I'm not really pressing on the paper as much as I'm just pushing the colored pencil across the surface of the paper. That's more what it is. So it's like your hand is just holding it there, but it's just moving. It's not really pressing down on the paper. And that's what's really tricky about that. And Selma is saying very true, like watercolor, you need to have a lot of patience and just keep layering. Oh boy, I learned my lesson on that when I did my watercolor tutorial in Utah. That tutorial was one gigantic learning curve for me. And Dylan says, what do you think will be the best reference photos? Oh, next, next reference photos added to the Flickr collection. It depends. I mean, it bothers me that because of the pandemic, I can't really get an artist model right now. That's what I would like to do is hire an artist model and shoot more photos of figures and faces. I know that's what a lot of people need. I just can't do it right now because of the pandemic. So oftentimes I go for hikes a lot in Utah and whatever's there. I mean, I always stumble upon things that I'm not prepared for. So I'm trying to do that. I do want to add some more pictures of vehicles because I know a lot of people need like a picture of a car or something like that. And so I'm trying to beef up some of those areas and, and just give you guys options. Because you know something, when I started that reference page, it, it really was for the draw alongs because it bothered me that people didn't have access to that. But now I'm like, whoa, people really need this. Like I had no idea. Tell me in the chat, have you guys used our... Flickr collection. And it, the link is in the video description below if you guys don't know. Tell me if you've used it and if you found it helpful. Because I did not think it was going to be that big a deal. But the couple people who have talked to me about it are like, no, oh my God, it's such a big game changer. Really helped me not have to spend hours searching on Google because it's true. I mean, if you look for images on Google, the images are not that big. Like, even if you set it to like large search for large pictures, it's never really quite the same. It, it's different. All right, I'm gonna adjust this shadow because I don't like the shape of it. And actually let's get in some like dark magenta. This is a dark shadow. This cast shadow that's coming across, it's like articulating these two muscles, pectoralis major. We all know who is a nice <laughs> pectoralis major. 
<laughs> oh, guys, what would I do without you, Wolverine? <laughs> Life is just so much more fun when you've got hot men to leer at at night. <laughs> okay. You know, some people watch drama and get excited about that, but <laughs> I need someone who's good to look at for me to be interested. Or it has to be like actually a good movie. <laughs> like There are not a lot of good movies out there. Or it has to have Kate Blanchett. If she's in it, I'll watch it, like no matter what. So I guess it depends. Depends on what's going on. I saw this cool movie. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. I think it won Best Picture a few years ago. I can't remember, but it's called Spotlight. Oh, and actually, you know who's in that movie who I love? He's like my old man crush. I'm sorry. John Slattery. He was in Mad Men. He played Roger in Mad Men. But he was in that movie Spotlight. And it was about the Catholic Church, the whole fiasco, the scandal, which I'm not going to get into right now. But um, it, it was about the investigative reporters who broke that story. And that was really, that was an amazing movie. It was so good so smart and, and none of it was about people being hot it, it was just real dialogue real people oh it was so good that was a great movie so smart and so compelling and real i mean i really like nonfiction a lot i know some people are like really into fiction but i just i don't i don't know for me there's something it adds another layer of depth when you're like oh my god that happened whoa <laughs> like, truth is stranger than fiction right i want to pump up this color i need like a corally maybe like this this is good this is like a corally pink right here Let's just really pump that up and then i see a little bit of an impression here so yeah if you guys pay attention to the speed of my drawing you'll see that that is very helpful when it comes to the layering i feel like i need to draw faster i feel like i'm not I'm not getting the progress that I want. I told myself when I said, I'm like, Clara, you're going to be aggressive. You're going to fix all those issues. You're going to redeem your artistic integrity. Uh, sure. <laughs> all right. Sure. I'll try. Okay. Let's draw the rhymes with stipple because rhymes with stipple is very important. Uh, yeah, actually, the rhymes with stipple doesn't look so great over here. I'm, I'm trying to remember that sometimes it's easy to forget how quickly you can get demonetized on YouTube. Like, I recently stopped, uh, finished, we'll call it Pitt's Creek. And uh, <laughs> I accidentally mentioned it the other day. I'm like, crap, we're going to get demonetized. No, no, no. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to draw these like beautiful folds that are right underneath the pectoralis major. See, just think about Wolverine. You guys trying to remember pectoralis major? Just think about Wolverine, right? Or Michael Fassbender in uh, Assassin's Creed, which was the worst movie. You guys, never watch it. It's so bad. It's so bad. Like, it's not even funny. It's not funny bad. You know what is funny bad, though, you guys? This is so trashy. Who here has watched Cobra Kai? It's so bad. Oh my God. It's like a total, total car crash. Like I can't stop watching it though. It's so trashy. It's so, so bad. <laughs> and uh, yeah, tell me if you guys have watched Cobra Kai. Although I'm going to guess that if you didn't grow up with the Karate Kid, the movie, it's probably not as fun to watch because the Karate Kid was such a big deal when it came out. And I, I think unless you lived through that, Cobra Kai probably is not remotely as fun as it is for us old folks. So, yeah, I don't know. Like for me, it's got to be that level of bad. Like for me to keep, like I could not finish Assassin's Creed. It was so bad. Like, sorry, Michael, even you couldn't save that movie. Uh, yeah, that made me really, really sad. Okay. See, these wrinkles I'm putting in here, they still feel very superficial. I'm going to guess there I will. They are going to look less crappy very soon, maybe, I hope. Maybe let's emphasize this one a little bit more. Yeah, and then it's tricky because then it's like I start seeing all the subtleties. Like in here, this is actually quite a bit darker. And then this comes down more. 
oh, like I said, it's just too much to tackle all at once. Dude, you guys maybe might have to do another one. I don't know if I'm going to finish this. Or I could finish it and just show it to you guys. But I do know a lot of people want to, like, see it being done. Um, I don't know. It might not be a very exciting stream, though. Okay. All right. That's a little bit better. And... Oh, <laughs> that sketcher says another word alternative. Areolus? Is that how you say? <laughs> I have no idea. Bridget is asking, I'm curious why you use the watercolor pencils instead of the polychromos. You know what? I don't know why. I, I guess I just have them. Faber-Castell sent them to me. And maybe there's a big difference, but I happen to really like these. I mean, this is the one that I'm using, it's watercolor pencils, Albert Durer, Faber-Castell. And out of all the color pencils I've tried, this is my soft, but not too soft. Because I've used other ones, it's just like a little too hard. And some of the Prismacolors are a little bit crumbly. I don't really like that. These are a nice in-between. So it's not because I wanna paint with them. It's just, I happen to like them. <laughs> so I don't know. It's like, I've never really been able to try like every single brand. So I don't always know. And sometimes it's like, oh, well, somebody just gave it to me. So like, whatever. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna scroll up and see what other people are saying. And Darian is asking, do you use markers in your drawings? If so, what types of markers do you use? I happen to really like these. These are Tombow brush pens. And you know what's cool is that these are water-based, but they also came out with a new kind that's alcohol-based. They're kind of like Copics, except that they are shaped like the brush pens. And if you watch my Utah watercolor tutorial, you'll see me use the alcohol-based ones in conjunction with the watercolors. So I recommend taking a look at that. I know Lauren Welch, who is a teaching artist here at Artcroft, she has a marker tutorial, which you guys can find on our YouTube, and she goes through everything. She talks about fabric castells and paint markers and Liquitex. It's a great tutorial. And I knew nothing about markers until I talked to her, and I'm like so addicted now. So I credit Lauren in those terms. That sketcher says, love these messy, cranky live demos. <laughs> okay, good. Because as someone who grew up, having been told to repress my emotions, especially being autistic and in a misunderstanding family, this normalizes me feeling messy stuff. You know what, you guys? Okay, here is my life advice, okay? My feeling, and I know this from talking to students, because for some reason I'm the crying professor. I'm who people talk to when <laughs> they are having a crisis. At least that's the way it was on campus when I was at RISD. And um, so my feeling after seeing all of that, because students would come talk to me, like people who you would think are like, whoa, they have it so together. They're amazing. They're so on top of it. And like, lots of people were falling apart. They really were. They had things going on that were very difficult. And what I know is that everybody is effed up. Everybody. We, we all have stuff in our lives. Everybody. Okay. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's somebody you care for. Maybe it's a family member or a situation, whatever. Everybody has stuff in their lives. Okay. It's just my feeling is that some people are very good at hiding it. Some people cannot hide it. Some people are trying, but not doing so great at it. And so really it's sort of like, what are your skills for keeping that mess public or private or, or whatever? And it's really hard because sometimes you want people to know what's going on, sometimes you don't. It really depends. That is my life advice. Actually, my mom's life advice, I really like this. <laughs> Her two pieces of advice were, what was the first one? Oh, you can't change anybody and keep your own bank account. <laughs> I just, I like that a lot. That really works for me. Okay, I'm trying to beef up some of the colors now because this is getting very blue and I don't like that. So I'm trying to put this in here and you know something, I am seeing a lot of green in here. So let's pump up some of the green because the thing is, 
you do have to think about warm and cool. Like so much of what I have right now is very warm and you can overdo it. Like you can have so much warm stuff that the cool stuff disappears. And so I do think it's good to balance between the two. Try not to have like all warm with no cool. I have a little bit of both. Okay, let's work on the other pectoralis major. So I'm gonna come over here. Oh, stupid reflective light. Why you gotta do that to me? Okay, so here it should be lighter, but I don't wanna put in the sand eraser because I think that's gonna kill it. So instead, let me zoom out on the photo a little bit better. Maybe so I can see the context of that more. And then, okay, here we go. Because this is pretty dramatic. There's this like indentation here from the pectoralis major, which we talked about. And I'm gonna build up, like now I'm gonna start pressing hard. In fact, <clears throat> I don't like this color. I think I need more saturation. And now I'm gonna press hard. I'm really gonna lay on the pressure. Because if I don't, it's just always gonna have that grain. And that, that's one thing I don't like about colored pencil is that grain can make it look really unfinished and too thin. Like I, I don't like the thinness of it. So if I come in here, I just try to spread this color. That's another thing is when you guys introduce a color, don't just work it in one spot. You gotta spread it out. So you can see I'm working on it here, but I'm letting this red spread to the clavicle because I want it to distribute itself a little bit better. Rachel's saying, I feel like Pinterest is good for references that look picture perfect, but nor more normal, more versatile ones, it's best to look elsewhere. And W315 says, I sometimes draw a random one of your reference photos for a quick practice. For finished drawing, I can always use more facial expressions at multiple angles and hand gestures too. All right. 10,000 Crow says, is it true? Everybody is effed up. That would make me feel so relieved because it really feels like it's just me. It always feels like it's just you, always. And students would say the exact same thing to me. I'm like, no. And I know this because, I mean, I'm not saying I was a therapist, but people told me stuff. Oh my God, when I was a professor at RISD, people told me everything, horrible stuff. And just, you have no idea what people are going through. You just don't. Like, okay, here's an example. So when I was in high school, there was this girl in my class who, she was a little bit bratty, okay? And she would whine about things all the time and always try to get attention. And we were very mad at her because she joined the lacrosse team and the lacrosse team, they said, listen, we don't have enough helmets for everybody. So we're gonna have to make cuts. So they had like these tryouts and everything. And this girl got cut. She was very mad about it. And so she went and she bought her own helmet. They're expensive. And they let her on the team because she bought her own helmet. I'm like, that's not fair. He's like all these other kids who like wanted to be on the team, but who couldn't afford to buy their own helmet. And that's really not cool. Like they, they should have said no, honestly, like from a teacher, like coach point of view, they should not have allowed that. In my opinion, that was a bad move on their part. But of course people were mad. Like that was such a annoying thing to do. Okay. And so that's just one example. But later on, I found out, I don't know, through like word of mouth or something like that, that her brother was a drug addict and had severe problems, was in and out of rehab. And I don't think he was that much older than her. I mean, this was in high school. And I found out about that and I just thought, oh my God, like that totally makes sense. She probably was not getting a lot of attention at home. I mean, who wouldn't behave that way if you were in that situation? So it, it just goes to show, it's like even people who you're just like, oh my God, they're being such a brat. They're horrible, right? Sometimes there's a reason for it. So yeah. And I'd have students who were like top students, so responsible, so phenomenal. And I just was like, they have their stuff together. And I had this one student 
they told me that they were caring for their grandparents and um, they were having trouble because of that. And they totally had this like breakdown in front of me. And I was like, oh my God, like I know you no idea what she was going through. So I try to give people the benefit of the doubt, but sometimes people are just obnoxious. <laughs> so sometimes there's that too, sometimes you don't go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay. I want to make these wrinkles more severe. These ones that are coming up like that. And let's really get the stretch, the elasticity of the skin. I really want to show that. And this should be more round. Oh, we got to work on this deltoid. Yeah, this deltoid is bad. Really bad. Oh my God, it's terrible. I think Deep D is rubbing off on me. Deep D said that she talks to herself when she draws. Now I'm starting to do it too. It's great. It's one of the things I love about my team. Like we're always teaching each other. I mean, poor Jordan. He is just, oh my God. Kat's like, how do I do this? I'm like, where are my layers? Deep D's like, whoa, what did you do? <laughs> I think poor Jordan has to like teach all of us procreate. It's really funny. <laughs> But, you know, that's how you learn. You should have no shame about asking people for help. I definitely have met people in the professional world. It's like they can't get over their own stupid ego to, like, ask for help. I'm like, listen, if a student knows how to do something better than me, I'm going to ask them. And I did that when I was at RISD. I would just be like, okay, show me. I want to see. Show me how to do that. I am all ears. Oh, this is annoying me. I feel like... I'm not getting the tension. That, that's something to think about. When you guys are drawing the figure, ask yourself, what is tense? What is bony? What is loose? What is fat? Think about the gravity of the form. I think that makes a big difference. I still need some brighter colors. I feel like it's getting a little bit muddy. I mean, that's, that's another thing that's going to happen is when you guys work on these more, there is going to be more of a tendency for the color to get muddier. Yeah, so look at the speed. The speed is very important. Oh, shoot. I just like drew into his hair. Ugh, it's really annoying. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, let's do some squinting, guys. If you have not done it, step back and look at your drawing from a distance. Okay, I think... This clavicle has to come down. So even now I'm still making corrections. Well, not corrections, adjustments. There's no really correct. That doesn't really exist. Okay, so let's just punch up this shadow. Get that more dramatic. Okay. And then I do want to push, there's like a lot of pink here. So let's push that down. So here's the thing, like a lot of people you might say, oh, well, Clara, you made that too dark. You have to make that lighter. But you know what another option is, is you, instead of making something lighter, you make the stuff around it darker. So that's basically what I'm doing now is like this highlight, it's not really that bright, but if I add these darker colors around it, that does make a big difference. Okay. Yeah, and actually, okay, I gotta do more squinting. Hang on. I know this is not fun to watch me just sit here and squint, but it is an important part of the process. Okay. Yeah, I just... Yes, this is definitely my drawing face. <laughs> I'm just trying to push some of these forms a little bit more like that. Yeah, there we go. I want to give a shout out to 10,000 Crows. Thank you so much for the super sticker. We really appreciate it. Guys, everything counts. Whether you give us a dollar on Patreon or a super sticker, it matters to us because we rely entirely on donations. We're on a shoestring budget. We want to keep our prof free. That's so important to me, but we need that support. So anything you guys can give us is hugely important. That sketcher is asking, what are your thoughts on colored pencil blenders? Are they really a helpful tool or is it just a hindrance? I've seen mixed responses, would love to hear more. 
I just have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> like I've never used a colored pencil blender. Are you talking about those like stumps, the tortillans, whatever they're called? Maybe if that is what you're talking about, I don't like those. I think they're annoying. They might be okay for charcoal, but I, I prefer to be a control freak and <laughs> control what's going on in my piece just with pressure. Because I think sometimes with a blending stump, it's like you think it's going to do everything for you, but it, it does not. Not at all. So, yeah, that, that, I'm not really a big fan of those. But it depends. I mean, maybe it works for you. If it works for you, then do it. That's fine. I, I think it's, it's everything is so personal. My feeling is that you should just try everything out. Try it. You don't like it. That's fine. But never write off any technique just because you think, oh, I don't need that. Just try it. You can always choose to not use it. I mean, that that's a rule we have actually at the dinner table with my kids. We have a rule that every single food that is on the table, they have to try one bite. And if they try one bite and they hate it, they are allowed to not eat it again. But they have to try it that one time. And it works because then expose them to all those palates and everything but they also don't feel like, oh my God, I have to eat that because I don't think that's very nice. Because, you know, some of you guys don't like pie. I don't know what's wrong with you, but you know, <laughs> I don't know if AJ is here, but if they are, <laughs> that, that pie thing, I just don't comprehend. <laughs> okay, I gotta move down. I feel like I'm getting a little stuck on the upper section. That, that's another thing that's hard. Longer you guys work on these drawings, the more of a temptation you're gonna have to just stay in one spot. So what I need, I need like an orange. So this is a lot brighter than I would like it to be, but I think I actually need this level of saturation and I'm gonna pull it around over here so it doesn't isolate itself. Oh man, this is a disgusting color. This is like, really, really bad American cheese. <laughs> oh, this is hideous. Actually, I'm gonna bring it over here because this area was getting a little bit dull, this like reflected light section. And you can see this starts to pump up some of the saturation. I just felt like that was getting a little bit muddy in that area and maybe up here a little bit more. So remember the key to colors and getting variation, it's not just the colors you pick, but distributing them so they don't stay in one area and end up looking like a sore thumb. Okay. Yeah, ooh, that looks kind of good. See, I told you, <laughs> you might actually have some success at some point. Um, just so you guys know, I am gonna go quite a bit today because I'm starting to get into this. So let's see, I don't know how long, but we'll see how long my attention runs. <laughs> Because I do like this part. I mean, as much as this is driving me a little crazy, there is something somewhat meditative about the blending that I really enjoy. I just, I love that part of it, even though it is tricky. I don't know, sometimes the beginning is more stressful for me because I feel like, oh my God, everything's on the line. Oh my God, I have to capture the gesture. <laughs> and this is more like crochet or knitting where it's, it's one repetitive pattern and the changes you make are not that dramatic. In fact, a lot of the changes you end up making, they're sort of on the cosmetic side, but I sort of like that. It's just a totally different rhythm. I mean, you guys can probably see just the physicality of the way I'm holding the colored pencils very different than what was happening last time. Oh shoot, I keep working on the same area for too long. This is not good. All right, I can't stop. I just want that pectoralis to look good. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is not, mm, shoot. This has to be a little bit more curved. Oh, okay. I, I guess stop picking. I'm picking. Who's picking? I'm picking. Don't pick. Don't pick. I just, uh, now I'm on this like blending rampage and I like really, really want things to blend. Okay, just a little bit more and I promise I'm gonna work on the stomach. I promise, I am. 
a lot of this is self-awareness, like catching yourself. Like, come on, Claire, quit it. All right, even more, getting this richer. And I'll post this in the Discord, you guys, because again, the colors on the screen, they're, they're not that good. They, they really don't help you very much. Shoot, I really want, I need more separation between these forums. Like this one should be its own thing. That one should be its own thing. And I need some orange in here to lighten that up a bit. Okay, now it's starting to get a lot richer. Okay, let me take a quick break, see what you guys are saying in the chat. Okay. Dylan is asking, how long do you think it took for you to do the lobster oil painting? Yes, that is in our oil painting tutorial. If you guys have not seen it before, oh God, that was such a hot mess. I mean, it's hard because with oil painting, there's so much time to dry in between layers. I would guess it probably took 20, 30 hours. I'm not somebody who picks at oil paintings very much. Probably more like 30, 20, something like that. Darian is asking, how do you donate? Well, there's a couple ways. You can do a one-time payment on PayPal and you can do monthly, which is on Patreon. And those links are in the video description below. If you guys want that, or you can also do it here live through a super chat. So those are options. We will take anything, guys. <laughs> we want to keep this up and running because, oh my God, every month it's like, are we still going to be here? <laughs> like, we'll just, we're going to keep doing it, but I want it to be free. I don't, don't want to charge a paywall, okay? <laughs> All right. All right. W315 says, I wondered how long we'd go because I'm at the point where it's about to look bad. Didn't know if there was time to go through that valley and come out again. It's up to you. I mean, my feeling right now is I'm probably going to go another 30 minutes because I, I feel like I'm just getting into it. So it's up to you guys. And I know not everybody can stay, but if you have to leave in the middle, you can totally just go post in the Discord and I'll take a look at it later. So that would be awesome. This is a good idea. So Blue Will Spirit says, take a picture. So you have that to post in case you don't get through the valley. Yeah, I mean, I love taking reference references of the in progress. It's very, very helpful. And sometimes it's a way to like preserve <laughs> the drawing that maybe you weren't feeling was going so great before. Okay, I promise I'm really gonna do the stomach now, I promise. Okay, let's do it. Let's really pump up this area. I'm trying to think, let's use something more saturated, but I need something dark. So maybe this like magenta color. Okay, now I'm gonna press hard guys. I'm gonna put in mega pressure because this shadow that I'm doing right now that comes down, like this is, yeah, that's like major rib cage action. So let's get that in. I mean, I love this point where you just, you get dark. <laughs> Because again, in the beginning, you can't do that. You, you have to hold back a little, but now I don't have to hold back and it's really fun. Okay, so this is sort of too magenta-y. I want more orange, but let's just block in the shadow first and then we'll see where we are. So this is like a smaller patch of muscle. And what I like to do with the musculature, you guys, I like to put in the muscle so it's like too dark and then I like blend it. I think it's harder to like incrementally blend. It's better to press hard and do it that way like this. Okay, and I know this shadow color, it's a little bit boring, but you know what, I, I need to start somewhere. <laughs> Let me get in, I still need some orange, maybe. Oh, this would be good. This is sort of like a cadmium red. This is more like cadmium, Cadmium light is more like that. It's not like the, the medium. Medium is a little bit darker. So if I put this in, just like that. Yeah, in terms of budget, you guys, I'm trying to get equipment so that Lauren and Alex can do the live draw-alongs. They don't have iPads. 
but I want to get them equipment so they can do traditional media like colored pencil or stuff like that. But it costs money. I mean, we have to get the equipment to get lights. I mean, to make it look good, we could do a crappy version, but I won't let them do that. So, <laughs> so yeah, we need equipment to do that. And so, and, and you know, there's other expenses too. Like we have to maintain our sites. We have to get materials. It, it's a lot. So I know it looks easy and cheap, but it's not, it's not cheap guys. <laughs> okay. That feels a little bit better. I think, Oh, I got to pump this up. Okay. You know, I want to do the dark part first. So down here, let's say like, this is really dark. Oh man. Okay. Let's just go to town on this area. So does everyone see why colored pencil is so freaking slow? Like it's just not a fast material, which is why I think for a lot of high school students who are preparing art school portfolios, I'm like, use oil pastel, use crayon. Those are so much more efficient because a lot of people when they're preparing their portfolios, I mean, you're pressed for time. You got school to deal with, you have all these other things to do. And so if you do something like colored pencil, it just takes freaking forever. So sometimes it's not the best material for that reason. It's just slow. And the thing is, I don't even use it as slowly as other people do. I've seen other people just take, oh my God, an agonizing amount of time on their colored pencil drawings. And, and really that's it's a little bit too much. Okay. So here, there's this like nice patch of like magenta. And again, I'm squinting. I'm squinting so much. Who here squints? Tell me in the chat, are you guys making the drawing face? The <laughs> That's the face that I'm making. Like that. Okay, let's really, I'm trying really hard not to hold back right now because I, I do want this to get further along, but, oh, you know, I need this. Yeah, I def, okay, let's pump up this. Actually, this is more green. Hang on, let me do a quick pass of orange. Th this orange is hard, like I have to use it in moderation because it's very bright and it could quickly just kill my drawing. So it it's like a very powerful spice. Like you, you don't wanna do too much with it. So I'm gonna do a pass of orange and then I'm gonna take the green and the green is gonna help me Maybe just get a little more value, get this a little bit darker so we can see the musculature a little bit better. By the way, we are doing a stream later on this month about value. So those of you guys who need help in that department, we're gonna be there for you. Elements of art, talking about value. Oh shoot, now this is too light. See, this is what happens. Like you work on one area, you think it's fine. And then you work on another area and then all of a sudden that other area is not fine. <laughs> it's balance. That's why you guys have to keep moving around. You have to work things together. You're gonna lose that cohesion, okay? See, I lost this wrinkle. It totally disappeared because I was working on something else. And so I gotta bring it back and do more blending. Okay, let's see. Huh, more squinting. Yeah, maybe under here? Here we go. Yeah, more wrinkles there. I mean, I know I'm complaining and acting cranky about my drawing, but I do love this, you guys. I do, I swear I do. I really, really do. It just doesn't, I know it doesn't sound like I do, but I do. I mean, there's almost nothing else I'd rather be doing than drawing. It's just, oh my God, there's nothing like it. You know what I like about drawing? This is what I like about it. We have such a fast pace to the world right now, right? And I'll be the first to admit, I spend way too much time on my phone. Like, you know when your phone tells you, you average this amount per day on your phone. And that is down 10% from last week. You know, when it tells you that, I'm just horrified when I see that number. I'm like, this is terrible. This is really, really horrifying. But what I like about drawing is when I draw, I don't look at my phone. I can't, there's too much going on. I don't look at my phone and the world disappears around me. I forget about all my problems. And it's like you enter another portal to a universe. And I love it. 
it's just the greatest thing. Like even when my drawing comes out crappy, I still feel better that I got to draw. So don't, don't tell yourself that there's any amount of time where you've lost something when you draw. You have not. My feel that way. Oh, shoot. I got to fix this belly. Oh, crap. Uh, I think... Oh, yeah. I got to move that, like, all the way over. Sheesh. Okay, so this little shadow shape here, this has to move over to the left. Let, let's make this... Let's get really satisfying <laughs> with this belly button. I'm going to really pump that up a lot more. And here I want to really show, okay, let's get something really dark. This is where you guys have to be very conscious of edges. Okay. Do you see how I'm making it very crisp and graphic there? And then it slowly fades and gets softer like that. And actually this pushes out a little bit more. So let me, belly buttons are pretty satisfying <laughs> to draw. I don't know what it is about them. We need more yellow here, more some orange, something more saturated. Let's see. Okay. That's a little bit better. Oh shoot, that was bad. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> and there's like a little flap of skin here. Like, does everybody see this? Right there. And then there's like a shadow above it. So this is like one of those very detailed shadows that you can't do in the first pass. Everybody see how different that is? But, oh man, that is satisfying. <laughs> I love that. Awesome. If we need a little bit more value. Darken this with some of the blue. Okay, and then, hmm, that looks like it's sliding. I think we need some more orange around here. Let's bulk that up. Then maybe here, yeah, we need a lot here. Maybe I'll get that disgusting orange, the, the American cheese orange. Maybe that's what we need in this section. This is layer upon layer upon layer, you guys. It just, it sort of like never ends when it comes to this. Oh, I did too much orange. Let's get rid of some of that. Maybe block in um, some of this green. The green makes such a difference, you guys. Cause like, it's not like you're seeing green. It's more like the green offsets the saturation of the brighter colors. Think about it more like that. Cause a lot of people will say, oh, well, why would I want to put green in there? That just looks really weird. And I'm like, it's not really about the green as much as it is about just changing the nature of the other colors. Okay, so let's put in just a little bit of that form. Ooh, that's still not enough. That's, oh, there's not enough separation here. That's gotta squint a little bit more. Oh, okay, it's this direction. See how I'm going in this direction, guys? That's a pretty big difference. Because it's like that's the direction of the muscle. The muscle's going that way. That's that's the direction the skin is going. And you can even see it in this area above the belly button. Like that. Squint a little more. Oh, this. Much bigger than I have it. Is that right? Squint. Is that, hmm, not totally sure. But remember guys, step back, look at that drawing from a distance. Don't just stare at it the whole time. Doing more squinting. And I think this is more substantial, isn't it? I think this shape should be bigger. I don't know, like I'd rather my shapes be too big than too small because then at least they're making a statement, right? And if things are too hesitant, it's not great. All right, a little bit more green to offset some of those red shadows like this. Okay, and then, ooh, this is a nice spot. Hmm, what should I use for that? Maybe I'll use more like a cranberry color, something more like that. And then I'll take a little break and look at the chat. I know you guys are hanging out together. This is so fun, I love this. <laughs> This is pretty awesome, you guys. 
it's so funny. Like when I started Art Prof many years ago, I never thought we would do live. And I, I was really against the idea of doing live for a long time because I didn't like how sloppy it felt. And I wanted to be able to like edit and make it more clean of a package. But it seems like people really like the live interaction from what I gather, people like that as opposed to watching pre-recorded. I mean, pre-recorded is fine too. For I mean, like, especially for things like that Utah tutorial I made, like I could not do that live. It's too challenging doing it on site. But for something like this, it's totally doable. And there's so much good software now. Like we use StreamYard. I know everybody's all into Zoom, but StreamYard is so much better than anything else I've tried. So anybody here wants to do live streaming, use StreamYard. And we have an affiliate link in the description if you guys want to check that out, because we get a little cut if people do that. OK, that's starting to get a little bit richer. Mm, again, more squinting. I don't know. I'm getting a little tired of this cranberry color. Maybe I need, I don't want green, but maybe I need like a brighter red. I feel like this cranberry color is taking over as I add more. <laughs> maybe I need, no, maybe I need more. Isn't that crazy? Like sometimes you're like, I need to cut back. And then you realize, you know what? There's just not enough of it. Maybe having more of it is what's going to give it the pro Oh, this is bugging me. I don't like this part, sorry. <laughs> sometimes you just, just gotta jump. So th here's the thing, you guys, when you layer, you're laying over everything. So even if you're saying to yourself, oh, I wanna work on the clavicle, you can't just work on the clavicle. You have to like work the clavicle with the pectoralis major, which is this. This is bugging me, like this is way too sharp, but I don't wanna go in with a sand eraser cause that's gonna kill it. So maybe if I just shade around it and try to make it a little softer, maybe that will help. I don't know. I still feel like this orange is not happening just yet. I mean, it's getting there, but I don't know. I still feel like I'm a little bit restrained and I'm not sure I like that. I, I do want to feel, ah, crap. Let's do some blue down here. We, we need some cool colors. I think that's the issue. I think it's just too much cranberry. I was wrong. So maybe this will give me not just the value, but the shift of warm and cool. Maybe that will help. Oh, I kind of like that. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Let's do that. I guess it's Prussian blue to the rescue. Okay, let me see what's going on in the chat, what you guys are talking about. Blue Wolf Spirit is asking, at what point would you work on the background? I'm actually gonna ignore it today because to me, this is a study. This is not really a piece. And there is a place for that, you guys. If you're just like, I wanna work on the eye. I wanna work on the pectoralis major. Like you don't always have to do background if it's a study, okay? Backgrounds are important if you're trying to like do a full out like finished piece, absolutely. Today, I'm not doing that. Today, I'm just trying to think about, okay, well, how do I get these colors to work? How do I articulate the form? Like that to me is much more important right now. But the answer to that, if I was making a finished piece, I would have had the background in within the first half an hour of the drawing because it, it's not the background. It's not an afterthought, you guys. It's so important. Like for example, for those of you guys who saw the stream yesterday, we critiqued this MFA portfolio and the beginning of the stream, we talked a lot about the location of where the artwork was set up. And it's like, that's not a small thing. That That's a big difference in terms of how you, like if you put it in a room, if you put it outdoors, if you put it in a white cube gallery, it's like, it really changes. And it's like the backgrounds, they, they make a big, they have a big impact on what's going on. Ooh, I'm kind of liking this orange. I think I just need more of it. Oh, this got a little bit too light. It, it's a it's sort of a seesaw process. Like one thing, that thing, go back, go there. <laughs> I do feel I'm starting to get some of the richness though. Okay. 
Let's see what people are saying. Sonnet is saying, I heard a quote that said, my art is the perfect way to simultaneously escape and indulge the world around me. Oh, that's beautiful. I really like that a lot, you guys. Oh, <laughs> C. Cantrell says, this, this color, I keep calling it American cheese, but this is it. Velveeta orange. <laughs> That's the color. Oh my gosh. That's so perfect. Darian says, art just makes sense. I can't explain it, but it's like creating something that doesn't exist. Something that no one has ever seen before. Seeing things in a different world that others can't see. I'm so happy you bring up seeing because so many people think drawing is just your hand, your hand physically, but it's not just that. It's how you see things, how you think about things. That is the most important thing to talk about. Dylan says the oil painting video, you mentioned the still life was not the same. Did the jackfruit move? Did it rot? Yes, it did. It totally, I, I thought it was gonna last longer. I mean, I've never bought a jackfruit before, but I really thought it was going to be there for at least, it was gone in like two days, guys. It Don't paint jackfruits. <laughs> Unless it's a one day still life, don't do that. Well, you got to watch me make all kinds of mistakes. Seven Angelics is Art Prof merch. We need a pin that says crap. Oh, we so do. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that would work a lot. Margaret says, we love the lives. They give us the chance to interact with you and each other in our art prof fam as you're creating. That's great. I mean, it all makes sense to me now. But for the longest time, I just did not understand the culture of live video. And now I feel like I understand that a lot better. Okay, let's do some more. I really want to get this rolling because this is not enough. We need the blue. That, that's what we need. Because this, this little puncture... It's pretty important. And actually, I'm going to beef up some of it in here too, because right now I'm working with value. I'm looking at how dark things are, how light things are in relation to each other. I don't know. Like, I'm just starting to get into that. Isn't that crazy? Like, I've been drawing for two hours almost. And I feel like I'm just like, who, who's doing that? Are anybody here finding their groove like right now? <laughs> like, that's what I'm sort of doing. I don't know, it might go longer than two hours. <laughs> we'll just see. So sorry, guys, if you're not around when I go into the Discord, but I don't know. This is kind of like rocking my world right now. That's a big change of pace. Oh, my God. Okay. This has to get darker. I don't like that this is darker compared to this. So that's what you need to start doing is you say, how dark is this compared to this? Now, if I look at the photo, this is darker. But in my drawing, it's the opposite. So that means I got to come in here and I got to really make this darker. So the values, it's not just what does it look like to me, it's how does that look compared to that? Make those comparisons in your images and that's how you're gonna get the relationships. Don't just work one value at a time, like work them together so you really understand that. Okay, this contour could be more clear. So I think I'm gonna, oh, that's lighter than I thought. You guys ever put down a color and you're like, Ugh, that is not the color I thought it was going to be. <laughs> that happens to me, especially with markers. Like you always ever find that the markers, they're just like not the color that the actual cap is. It's, it's usually like way off. I mean, I understand that's hard to match. It's just, I have to always like prepare myself because I'm like, Ugh, that is not <laughs> the color that was advertised. <laughs> that can be very, very tricky. All right, we need to really, because this, this uh, wrinkle here, it's way more dramatic than I have it. I am not doing a great job with that. Um, hmm, more squinting, squint, squint. I think, what, what do I see there? Yeah, spend time looking guys, don't, don't get lazy. In fact, at this stage, you gotta look harder because you're trying to see subtleties that in the beginning you, you see past them because you, you don't want to deal with that. But right now, like I got to look really carefully like that. Okay, now this is sort of like reflected light area. You know, I don't really know how to do this. I've never used white color pencil. Let's just see. Let's see if that makes things better or worse. 
Oh, I kind of like that. Hmm. Let's see. I, I really, honestly, I've never really used white colored pencil. I wasn't sure if it was a good idea, but maybe if I blend enough, it will be. I don't know. I'm sort of on the fence about this. But no turning back now, because once you put a color in there, you got to commit. So maybe if I just blend that white. Let's see, because I want to show the direction of the rib cage over here. Oh, I love these muscles. These are called serratus muscles. They're so, I love these. Like, guys, I love rib cages. Rib cages to me are beautiful. They're just incredible. And I don't want to lose my opportunity to draw a rib cage. Okay. Oh, that's, maybe that's better because that does soften up. I think I got to press harder. I think I'm not pressing hard enough with the white. Yeah, no, I, I really got to go to town. Ooh, I kind of like that. Let's do some of the white. Who's using white with me? Let me know because I'm sort of liking that effect. It's going to be a while, you guys. <laughs> like I keep finding things. I'm like, ooh, that looks kind of cool. Let's keep doing that. I mean, drawings always take longer. Like I'm always like, ah, oh, this is not going to take long. Yeah, it takes a long time. Very easy, I think, to underestimate just how long things are actually going to take. But I know some of you guys really wanted me to like finish this so that you could see that progression. Because I, I do, I'm really into showing the beginning because the beginning oftentimes like people just don't know where to start. On the other hand though, it's a whole other can of worms. Like tell me you guys in the chat, what do you think is hard about working on a long-term piece? Like a drawing you're spending many, many hours on. What do you think is hard about that? Because actually when I was teaching at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, they had me teaching this class. It was a cool class. It was called Long Pose Portrait Drawing. And we would just do one pose for six hours. It was hard. People thought it would be easier. It's not. It's actually very challenging for that reason. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Now we got to put the white everywhere. <laughs> Look at what I started. And the white is difficult. Like I'm pressing hard guys. This is not light because it's like the white is so minor. It has such a little effect that if you don't press hard, you won't get results. So if you are using your white colored pencil, make sure you guys are like working it. Okay. All right. Let me see. Yeah. That does look a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. I need, I need to spread it out a little more. So let's bring it down. I don't want to bring it down too far. Maybe just like down to here. Oh man, you got, you got to work this thing. This is really hard. And then hmm, let's flip back to here. Get this a little bit more dramatic in terms of the value. And so that brings the white maybe like into here. I don't know. I don't want to do too much because this is pretty dark. But I do want to do here. So let's just like, bleh, go crazy like this. That feels good. Yeah, you know, this is why I like the crayons better because the, the effectiveness of the white with crayons is much more impactful. Like this, you got to work really hard for the white to even make any difference at all. So that's one of my reasons why I tend to like the Caran d'Ache crayons better, but you know, whatever floats your boat, it's up to you guys. Okay. See, there's still these like little green bits that I don't like so much. And you know, why is there this like disgusting blue line? Yuck, I don't like that. Okay, let's go over that with white and hopefully that fixes the edge a little bit better. Okay, I definitely need more but I think I got to move on and work on other sections. Okay, let's see. I think I need to work here. Let's get more of those like bright Velveeta cheese orange <laughs> in there. Maybe here too. I feel like I lost a lot of the orange. 
Yeah, so you guys will notice the speed is there. I watched this colored pencil tutorial that really baffled me, I guess, because it was somebody doing colored pencil. And I think the tutorial was like two hours long and they worked on like one spot. And I was like, oh my God, how did these people finish anything? Like, I just could never work at that pace. I don't have the patience, number one. Number two, I didn't even know that that makes your work better. I think sometimes it's like you end up just picking and it's not really drawing as much as it is just filling sometimes. That can definitely be the case. Actually, maybe this orange can help me. Well, I don't know. Where's that? Oh, maybe this is not the color. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea, guys. <laughs> I'm just trying to pop in more of this like reddish color so we get a little more saturation going on in there. Okay, I gotta come back to this arm. This arm got all ugh, really smudgy. God, that looks terrible. Sheesh, I guess I made like a really big mess over there. Okay, let's see. Yana is saying long-term drawings have that sunken cost fallacy effect. Like sometimes a painting or drawing died, but it's so hard to quit it. But you know what, Yana? I would rather kill it. I really would, because I feel that a lot of people, when they get close to being finished, it's like they're walking on eggshells a little bit. And I don't think that feels so great, from my opinion, at least. 10,000 Crows says, for me, the hard thing about working on a long-term piece is the fear of messing it up after I've spent so much time on it. Yep, I really think you hit the nail on the head that that is the most compelling reason why people don't want to keep going. Because it's like, oh my God, I've done stuff that looks pretty good. If I do more, I could destroy it. But sometimes you got to learn that lesson. Sometimes it's okay for that to be the case. And Vanessa says, that's why it's important to try new things. If Professor didn't, we wouldn't have live streams. Yep. I mean, I did the stream the other day. Some of you guys were hanging around on the oil pastels. And I'm not joking. I had not touched those in over 20 years. And it, it felt good. Like it felt really refreshing to work on something that I really had not worked on for a very long time. Okay, we've got to come back to this arm. Oh, this arm is killing me right now. Oh, this arm is terrible. It's really bad. I had so many like pretty wrinkles. I feel like I ruined it. I don't know. Let's get some of this green in here. Okay, it's a little bit better. Oh, the sand eraser. You, you did not help me, sand eraser. I guess I have to like, oh, you know what it is? I think because I erased it and then some of the colored pencil pigment like got into it. So maybe what I'll do with these spots, I'll get rid of them right now, but maybe like when I'm almost done done, I'll go back in and I'll do another pass. But yeah, that's why these erasers, it's like they're flawed. They're really not doing what you wish they would do. So that's okay. I'm fine. That's okay. All right, let's do some arm action. I want that cranberry color again. Let's see if we can really give this deltoid some dimension, like Wolverine dimension. Oh my God, guys, he's so good. Like, oh my God. Days of Future Past just kills me because him and Magneto are in the same movie. I'm like, oh my God, I'm just dying here. <laughs> it's just too much hotness for one movie. Well, actually, there's no such thing as that. There's no such thing as too much hotness. I can never get enough of that. <laughs> okay. I want to show, like, I really, I got to pump up the contrast. Like, let's make this, like, dark. Like, darker than you think it should be. I mean, this is where I think people get nervous because it's like, oh, my God, what if I put it down and it doesn't work for me? And then I really can't, because this, I'm pressing so hard that you can't erase this. But you got to take that risk, guys. Because really, like, what would happen if you messed up a drawing? You feel bad about it, of course. Get over it eventually, right? Right? It's not really, it just feels like the end of the world. That's all. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to just let it rip, guys. Let's just get those veins. Let's pop them in. Just really work that intensity. 
I want this arm. Ugh, I really, really want it to work out. This arm is pretty important, I think. Okay, let's get in. So there's a lot of reflected light on the left-hand side. This is like the shadow core, which I'm doing right now. And there's quite a bit of texture down here. Like actually some of the skin starts to sag towards the bottom. So I am going to add some more spots there. Okay, that's feeling a little bit better. But I still, I still want to go darker. I don't know what I might do, you guys. I'll do a little bit more and I might just finish it later. Um, cause I, I do, I am feeling like I need a little bit of distance and then maybe I won't do another stream. I'll just finish it and show you guys the difference. I don't know. I'm starting to have fun now. Maybe I'm, I, maybe I just wasn't warmed up. I don't know. Do you guys think maybe when you start, well, I mean, I know that I'm never warmed up when I start and actually that's why sometimes when I do these streams, like I'll I'll just cheat and draw a little bit before because I don't want to feel like totally cold when I come into the drawing. It, it really is like you're doing push-ups, doing sit-ups like an athlete would. Okay. Yeah, I can feel myself warming up, not getting so stiff. Let's see. Because there is quite a bit of variation down here towards the bottom. So let me, let me make this a little bit more prominent. This edge is a lot harsher than I made it. Really got to get that going. Okay, that's a little bit better. This is a mess on this side. This just looks terrible. But whatever. I got to fix this. Clavicle's driving me up the wall. It's just like way too thick. So what I want to do is maybe just like darken this whole area, get it a little bit less wide. Actually, that's way too green. We need Velveeta cheese to help us out in that area for sure. Velveeta cheese, I had no idea you were this effective. And what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm just smoothing out the green. I think I put the green in way too harshly. So I'm just trying to get it a little bit more even. And then do some squinting here. Maybe we need that like corally pink color. No, it's not this one. Where did I put it? Was it this one? Maybe it was this one. I think it was this color. Because this deltoid it needs more definition. I think I made it way too light. So let's give him some of those Wolverine ripples. <laughs> Oh man, that makes me really want to watch the first X-Men. Oh, he's so good in that movie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, th this is too much green. You guys, this is all about balance. When you finish, what is this like compared to this? What is this like compared to that? That That's what you're after, really. It's, it's not about this one color that is going to fix things for you. It doesn't work that way. It's a combination of colors. How do those colors work together as a group to articulate the form? That's more what you're after. Okay. Any more wrinkle. I really, oh, I feel like I did a really crappy job of the neck, which makes me sad because the neck is like a really cool form, but it just, oh, sometimes, there are these parts you're like, I can't wait to do that. And then like you go and do it and you do a crappy job and it just makes you feel bad. All right. Maybe this will help. I do want to go back. See, here's the thing. Like now that I've spent all this time on the lower section, now the face looks terrible. So let's pop in more of those orange colors, more of those reds. Cause it just got really, it got really purpley because I was like spending all that time on the value. Okay, that's a little bit better. But I lost his facial hair. Shoot. Let's give him his facial hair back like this. I just need to punch up the richness. Like it just the thing is that I put so much 
of the other colors down that this just looks very thin compared to the other areas. And so I don't want this area to feel that way. I don't want it to look thin compared to everything else. Otherwise it looks like it's not done yet. Okay. Maybe a little coral. Well, I guess this is more like burnt sienna, I suppose. Who knows? And you know something, I am gonna do a little bit of texture for the facial hair, like up here. I just wanna show a little bit of texture so it's not like totally flat. I think that would look strange. So just some dark marks to just kick up the texture in that area. Yeah, because I think it would look weird to just let that be flat and boring. Let's see. Hmm. Doing more, more squinting. Squinting is so, so helpful, guys. I cannot express to you how much just blurring it. I know some people, they have glasses, they just take their glasses off because sometimes it helps them to see things in a more blurry manner. Let's see. Let's go back down to the arm. I feel like the arm, I don't know. It's like the, the pencil looks too thin to me down here. So let's pull out Velveeta cheese. And you know, I might do a little bit of white. That might be what it needs. Maybe it just is not layered enough. Because the thing is like this area here is only like one layer. And that's just going to look really flimsy compared to the rest of the drawing. And yeah, if I can pop pump up this orange over here, that might help me get this a little bit more dramatic. Oh, I kind of like that. It's kind of cool. Okay, a little bit of white, which of course I can't find my white colored <laughs> pencil now. You guys ever have, oh, there it is, it's on the floor. It's on the floor and it's broken. <laughs> Great, <laughs> nice job. Okay, because I think the arm, it, it doesn't match the quantity of colored pencil that I want to have. So if we get in some of this white. Now, in fact, I might try putting some of it here. Oh, I don't know if that looks so great. But let's definitely put it here because we need it on the side of the arm. And then even here, maybe this will break up that edge. So that edge doesn't look so sharp. I feel like I would like that a lot more. Ooh, oh God, you guys, I hate the face. The face looks terrible. Let me work on the face just a little bit more. If anything, I might just like darken it. So that way it, it like stays out of trouble. Although I don't know, maybe that's just me copping out. But the face is not the most important part. So I don't feel that bad about it. I, I feel that, yeah, you want it in there. But ultimately, this piece really is about the torso. It's really not about the face. Like that. Because sometimes it's like, you guys have heard me say before that it's like you have to be a director. Like you have to tell people what's important to look at. And what I'm doing right now is I'm telling you, guess what? This is not that interesting. Or it's not that well drawn. Don't look at it. <laughs> Maybe that's more what I'm trying to say to you guys. <laughs> Actually, this is a funny thing. <laughs> So my husband got his degree in film in animation at RISD. And so although he does animation, he has a lot of experience like editing and doing live action stuff. And <laughs> we're watching Cobra Kai, which is like so bad, it's so trashy, but uh, we're watching it. And I said to him, well, hmm, do you think these actors really are good at karate? Do you think they really had to like train to get better and everything? And my husband was like, well, the guy on the left, he's pretty good. And I can tell that the guy on the right is really bad. And I'm like, how can you tell? He's like, oh, well, I can totally see that they're editing around his back karate. <laughs> like the editors had to like actively try to edit around his bad karate. I was like, oh my God, that is hysterical. And I totally have done that. Like I have edited people who uh, had a few filler words. A lot. And so I have to edit around those filler words. 
And sometimes it's tricky because people have a lot of filler words sometimes. And I, I can make people sound really good <laughs> through editing. And the staff here, I've really had to, well, we've had to train each other to watch our filler words and be better about that. Because this is tricky. It's really hard. I think sometimes it's like people don't realize how much work actually goes into that. Because when you do it well, it looks great. But if you don't do it well, it, it's not great. OK, I'm going to do another pass of white through this whole thing because I'm kind of liking the white effect. It's not helping me a huge amount, but there is something a little bit subtle. And especially in an area like what I'm doing right now, those highlights do make a difference. So let's just see if maybe this will help me more. I'm pressing hard, hard, hard here, not letting up at all. The white, you got to be aggressive. This is not a color. You can just let it be. Not at all. All right, I want to do another pass of brown over this whole face because, again, it is getting very mushy. Hmm. Look underneath there. Uh, more squinting. This blue is driving me a little crazy. I don't really like that. And yes, I know the ear disappeared. Yes, I know the hair looks bad. I know. Trust me, I know all these things. <laughs> I'm going to darken some of this hair because this kind of got lost in the shuffle. This is really dark, this hair back here. And maybe I'll just toss in a couple of these like little like textural strokes. Because if you guys saw my lecture on hair, you'll know that one thing I talk about is not drawing every single hair, but that it does help to put in a couple stray hairs just to emphasize that, yeah, I mean, there is some texture. It's just you don't want to do it on everything. Okay. Let's try that. <laughs> People are saying the filler words, the ahs and the ums, you know, oh, ha, <laughs> I know. It's so true. And you know something? I've become so conscious of the filler words now that when I listen to NPR, which is like every day, I, I can totally tell who is a trained journalist and who is just some person. Because you'll notice that Ari Shapiro, on all things considered, has no filler words. And Mary Louise Kelly and Elsa Chang and Adi Cornish. I love them all, but I love Ari the most. He's so cute. <laughs> but uh, you'll notice some people are just terrible about it. And it's probably lack of experience. It's not because, right, they can't do it. It's just, you have to practice. It really is a skill that I think is involved. Okay, a little more orange back here. I feel like I lost some of the saturation that's going on like that. Okay, we're getting there. I still, I wanna do like a pass over the whole thing. I just wanna articulate a little bit better. Maybe some of the wrinkly parts, I don't know. Maybe I'm starting to pick now. That might be a sign that I'm almost done. I'm not totally sure. I just wanna do another squint <laughs> for lack of a better word. See if another pass of squinting is going to help me. Might not. Still squinting. I don't know. I think this, this shot is more dramatic than I made it. And same with these wrinkles. You know, I need another pass over this arm. That's what I need. I'm getting there, though. It's close. Close, you guys. I might do, like, a little bit of refinement later, but... It's getting there. Oh, Velveeta cheese. I had no idea I needed you in my life. I'm kind of loving this orange. Like, this is not a color I would associate with my color sensibility, but it's actually doing a lot right now. It's surprising. Like, things you think will not help you actually end up working out really well sometimes. That's why I'm like, guys, keep those colors around. 
Like even colors that you think are disgusting, like give them a chance. Some lines are exactly what you need. All right, let me see what else you guys are chatting about. W315 says, I always think I'm going to do an hour of warm up drawing before a live stream, and then I always run late. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's like story of my life, basically. Elizabeth is saying, more oil pastel draw alongs. Cool. Yes, I can definitely do that. This month, I am doing two draw alongs, well, paint alongs on water mixable oil paints. I've never used them before. So you guys are going to watch me stumble through that material as well. So we will be doing that, but I'll see if I can schedule in some other things in terms of colors. Johnny's saying, like the orange, blue, purple, red, and yellow colors, what colors would you use for darker skin tones like browns? I think, I mean, it depends on the person, obviously, but I think actually you probably would pump up the greens and the purples because the purple is good for value. So if you're doing something that's darker in general, and green is a nice way to tone things down. I mean, again, this is where I wish I could hire some models right now so I could get a broader range. This is actually just from my figure sculpture tutorial. This is where this reference photo comes from. But yeah, I would love to do some of people of more various skin tones is very, very good. Yeah, like Joe is saying, darker skin tones for next live stream. Yeah, it's tricky because it's like, I need to like have the person here. They have to be an artist model. I had to shoot photo. Yeah, it's hard because a lot of it's privacy, you guys. Cause like, you can't just take a photo of somebody. Like they have to agree to be in a stream to give you permission to use their likeness. So it's not as easy as it sounds to just get the person you're looking for. I mean, if I could, I would get like anybody. I mean, ask you to model for me, you know? So, <laughs> and let's see, W315 says, not my expertise. I would use ultramarine, burnt sienna, add less white, maybe some lizard crimson. Oh, lizard crimson would be great. That's a wonderful dark purpley red that again is great for value. And I think that's, important to think about because value oftentimes people forget about it because they're so wrapped up in the colors but you have to remember you got to keep that light and dark value going so colors like prussian blue alizarin crimson ultramarine even viridian which is like a dark green those are colors i rely on when i want value burnt umber too Burnt sienna is a little bit too yellowy and orangey to get value. Like, I think it's good for more like a mid-tone, but I, yellow ochre is also very good for that. But yeah, those colors I think would be great for that. I want to give a shout out to Boris. Thank you so much for the super chat. We greatly appreciate that, you guys. Everything you give us helps us keep Art Prof 100% free and accessible to everybody. All right, guys, please join me in the Discord. I will be in the Draw Alongs channel in a few minutes. If you're not in the Discord, come join us. It's where all the cool kids hang out because we're the best, right? Subscribe to the Art Prof YouTube channel and join the Art Prof family. And I want to say thank you to our top Patreon supporters who make it possible for us to keep providing our content to make art education accessible to everybody. Everyone, thank you so much for drawing along with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.